strong with the force you are, young Padawan. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Scavella Tana Show, guys. It's me, and I have a very special guest today. She plays the wonderful, wonderful Mandalorian, my favorite Mandalorian's mother, you know? Sabine Wren, we have the voice of Ursula <laughs> Wren here with us. Sharmila is here to talk all things Star Wars with us. The crew is not here. Rick and Daylight oh. will not be with us today because they got to go on vacation and like party, you know? <laughs> too cool for us. Too cool for school, Sharmila. Too cool. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, Sharmila, how are you? Them. <laughs> how are you, Sharmila? I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm alive. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a, a this you know this day and age. I think that's a really good thing that we can say that. Yeah, I always say that to people. I'm like, yeah, I'm alive. I'm great. Yeah. Living my best life. Woo! Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, Sharmila, my first question to you: You are the voice of Ursa Red. What does Ursula Red mean to you as a Star Wars person, uh, as Sabine Wren? Like, she's my favorite Mandalorian, Sabine. And then meeting her mother, Ursula Wren, she has a different, like, I could say, ideology of the Mandalorian ways than Sabine does. But so what does right. Ursula Wren mean to you? So, you know, I, I, this is, I think, relatively common knowledge. But growing up, I was a big Star Wars fan. My brother and I would watch the three original movies every time, like, they came out on TV. And, um, you know, it's funny. I knew, of course, about Boba Fett, and that was the Mandalorian that I had known about. And when I got the job, my brother is a really big Star Wars fan, and he gave me a pile of fan fiction to read. And what I learned very quickly is in the fan fiction, there's a lot of stuff about the Mandalorian. Um, and I had even not even the level of knowledge about it until, of course, I when I talked to Dave Filoni and he does a lot of background. And so I was able to get even just some incredible information from him. But so I read all the Star Wars the fiction and it was about the mining. Uh, like it was like t it was, I think, a thousand pages long. And wow. I, I was, and it's kind of the way that I work anyway. When I take on a character, as soon as I have some information, I like to get, do a deep dive in research. Also, liking uh, Star Wars. And I think by then, like my favorite movie is Rogue One. And as soon as I think that was already out when I got this job. So I was super excited by it. Um, but yeah, for me, Earth, I, I, you know, Dave and I had talked about it. Ursa is like a much more of a traditionalist. And I felt like compared, you know, Sabine is a rebel. No joke, right? Ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, Ursa was very much, uh, you know, she's a countess. She's the one who is the most powerful person there. She's also has um, years upon years of her family being in power and uh, being, uh you know, royal. So there's a whole level of having to live up to the expectations of your ancestors, which I think is also within kind of the Mandalorian code also. Um, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, he was telling me, you know, think about kind of the uh, Austrian, uh, the Jewish Austrians who lived right before World War II in Vienna, and uh, how, you know, they did all this major art collection and um, that they're like a culturally exquisite group of people, the Mandalorians in, in Cronist. So, um, you know, and then what happens is, you know, you had to cover all this stuff because Sabine behaved badly and left in, uh, you know, in a way that threatened our family and our power. And so there is that wonderful tug, you know, so much of the stuff we see is about father son conflict. And it was really exciting to be able to do a mother daughter conflict here, which is as rich and, and as complicated, maybe even more so, right? Because women, we are uh, <clears throat> not the guys aren't complicated, but we're also complicated. So yeah, so I, I kind of walked into it. Uh, not knowing a lot about Rebels, not knowing a lot about the Clone Wars, um, but then doing my research, watching episodes, and kind of getting to know Sabine 
and how my gosh my daughter has like purple hair and you know she's obviously like uh, edgy and and you know causing problems everywhere and she's got a chip on her shoulder where did that come from and uh how then do i present a, a mom who obviously loves her daughter but is also confounded by her there's definitely a big power clash that happens between the two of them right it so. is it's so big for um because like you said it's a fa father and son with like you see with the Mandalorian and baby Yoda Hunter from the Bad Bats Luke and and um Darth Vader right I mean like that's yeah. a whole story about father son or even Kylo Ren and um and Han Solo Han Solo yeah like uh, you see so and even just in general in movies these days we see so much of like father son stuff and so it was just great like within the Star Wars world to see a mother daughter that was like a rich complicated messy relationship yeah it was it's to me like there Sabine and um Ursa are very two different people you know but Sabine is a lot like Ursa. I mean, she's a very powerful woman. And you know how, like, I don't know if you do this, but I do this. My mom is a really strong mom. And actually, I based Ursa a little bit on my own mom. And she has, she's a not a bully, but she's a very strong opinion about everything. And it's her way or the highway. And I, in response to that, and it's directly in response to that, have behaved a different way in my life. So it is that we're part of each other, but it's only that based because she's like a certain way. I've taken another way of being that's directly related to that. And I always think that Sabine and Ursa are like that, excuse me, <coughs> being with cough. Um, so that's what I always thought of. Like there are so many, and I remember Dave did tell us this, you know, there's so many ways that Sabine hates that she's like her mom in certain way. But it's all there. It is. And it's just like you said, like, we all get something from our parents. You know, we all get like Sabine got her from her father's side, the artist. And from her mom, she's strong. But, you know, like, it's like just, just generations too. Like, Ursa grew up in a different generation than Sabine did. So you're looking at, like you said, like the World War II kind of vibes with Ursa. And then you're looking at like, like my generation now, like our generation now, Sabine, like standing up for herself, not believing one way and another. Yeah, like being able to be, I mean, like I think earlier generations, there's always this, especially if you're a woman in power, right? Even though with the Mandalorians, there's so many powerful women within the culture, right? Sure. Um, but as a woman in power, there's almost like this need to have to be perfect and to do everything exactly by the rules so that your power is not questioned. And I mean, like a second generation behind behind that, they can actually go after their own wishes because uh, you're not limited by the, um, by having to like be so perfect and make sure that there's no argument about you being in power. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Um, I would love, I don't know if you would agree, I think you would agree with me on this. I would love to see an animated show of you, Ursa Ren, and then Sabine, like as she's growing up during, after the Clone Wars, because now you have the Bad Bats. Now the Bad Bats will be ending this uh, season three. So what's next for animation? I would love to have like, because we already saw Hera and Bad Bats, we saw Keenan. Now like, where was Sabine in this time? I know you don't know that, but like, I would love to see like Sabine and Ursa Ren, like just like the man, an animation, like just a couple, maybe two seasons, three of what was the Mandalorian like during the empire? Cause we know the thousands of tears. We know, we know all that, but what was it like growing up as a Mandalorian during like the empire's reign? Well, you know, when I first got the job, I remember the first day I recorded, the way that they record is with a whole group. And I, oh, sorry, my friends don't know. Um, uh, and Freddie Prince Jr. came up to me and he's like, you're playing a Mandalorian. People love Mandalorians, be prepared. And it is true. And look, I would love to do it. That job was fantastic. I always, 
um, sometimes cry about my own career that, oh my God, how amazing would that be to be able to play it in a movie or play it, the, you know, not just voice. I've done that sort of character on stage many times, but uh, yeah, it's, I mean, like she's so complicated and rich and yeah, like how does she, like how do the two of them deal with their relationship when Sabine is younger? And then also um, the husband, right? I, yeah. I can't remember his name, but my husband. Um, how, like, how is that with Tristan too? Like, how is that family unit affected by what is going on, having to work with the Empire? Or how, you know, all of this stuff. I would, I'm like, I would sign on to it in a heartbeat. I, that would be a blast. So, me, me too, Sharma. Me and you will be there. there yeah, you go. Bebe, from your your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> now, my next question to you, Sharma, is what do you carry Ursa with you in your own light, in your own light day of life? Like, do you carry like, okay, like I'm talking to my friend, but I don't like what she says. Like something like that. Like, <laughs> like, oh, what would Ursa do? You know, every character you play, uh, what is it? Dustin Hoffman had this famous saying that you always use a part of yourself, right? Because it's only us that's mm -hmm. doing and so if you were to play Ursa Wren, you would play Ursa differently than I would. So I think that there are definite parts of myself that I used in it that maybe in real life, I don't necessarily come across as the most powerful person in the world, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> not yet anyway. But there are aspects of it, like after playing her, it was, um, it, it reminded me of like, oh, like, there are women who, and myself too, like there are points in our life when maybe we can't share the whole truth with someone, someone we care about, but we actually are making decisions in from a place of generosity and kindness, even though the outside may not see it. So, I mean, I think there's ways, but I look, every character you ever play is always a part of you and they always stick with you. And so we're all like an amalgamation of all the different characters we've played. Yeah, cause like, you know, like I carry like the Ahsoka with me. I might not be play, playing Ahsoka or anything, but I, I, she has, she's like, you know, the devil and the angel on you. She's like here and like, you know, like some Anakin's here because they're my favorite characters. And then you have Sabine, my favorite Mandalorian, is always like that warrior and that that stark saber inside of you, you know? Yeah. But, so, it, you know, uh, Jin Orso is maybe someone I carry in my heart all the time, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I definitely have Ursa in my life. Um, Especially because, you know, she's so, I, I was just amazed at how the fans love her so much. It's so cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like, again, every character is a part of you. And uh, I like that part of her. I mean, like, I like she's a badass. She's a badass, <laughs> you know. When I'm yelling at my cats, I'm like, her saying them. Like, get over here, eat your food, kitty, yeah, come on. Food. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sharmila, my next question to you is, what was your, what was it like recording? Did you all record at the same time? You, Tia, uh, Taylor? I think, uh, yeah, T we all, everybody was in the room together. Almost every time we recorded, except if people were shooting something elsewhere. Um, I don't think, I'm trying to remember, you know, it was a long time. It was a while back because we also record even the clone wars uh i wasn't allowed to tell anybody about it and that was i think two years before it came out oh wow but uh maybe a year and a half something like that but with the clone wars we definitely were all in the same room but again they had i remember they had someone i can't remember who it was um who was in new york or something that was uh uh kind of zoomed in and then uh, wow. with the re with rebels, wow. we almost always were in the same room unless people were out of town. Wow. Oh, okay, so that's cool. Like I, I because I know we all have to do a rebels reunion one day, Sharmila. Yeah, that way. I'm sorry, Arlo. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's like talking. <laughs> <away. laughs> it's okay. You can even bring him on. The, we can bring. We can see Arlo if you want. He'll become famous. I'll have Arlo. Arlo, come here. 
Hello. <laughs> what kind of dog is he, Sharmila? He's my, he's a little pug. Aww. Yeah, and like a Chihuahua pug mix. And he's yep. crazy. I guess, I definitely could hear the Chihuahua in him, definitely. Yes, sorry. Definitely. That's fine. Um, but my next question is to you, what's it like working with Tia, Taylor, Freddie, Vanessa, even Dave Filoni? Like, what's the atmosphere like? So, I mean, I got to start with Dave. It was an exciting job in that, like, it was, like, he, he immediately, like, brought me into the back section. Like, you know, when you record, there's the booth, and it's like a giant booth that has a number of settings for everybody, because they were always, always videotaping us also. Oh, okay. So they could kind of match our movements when we were acting or whatever. Um, and so uh, he took me back there and he started showing me some of the art. He showed me um, what my palace or my castle looked like. He showed me uh, that painting, the one that's based on the Klimt um, with Ursa. It was over the fireplace, I think. It's the one that's based on the Gustav Klimt, the kiss. And oh, okay. So showing me that and he started talking like about the history of the character about uh, and which was so uh, because again like I come from the theater that stuff is so exciting to me I love history like I love like creating a backstory for my characters and everything and so then he gave me so much to work with and to think about you know and and also like the relationship between um Sabine and Ursa and how um complicated it was and um, so we got to, it was great. We got to talk about that. And, you know, I think probably Tia and I had seen each other in theatrical auditions before. Oh, cool. Because I can't. Oh, we, we audition against each other quite a bit. So, um, so, uh, but it was the first time I had officially met her, I think. And uh, she was lovely. And uh, yeah, everybody was really cool. But I still remember. Freddie's kid's the one who came up to me. He's like, you're a Mandalorian? Like, this is like a big deal. You're going to have a lot of fans. Be prepared. So and now look at you now. <laughs> that's exactly. I mean, like, it's amazing. Like, when I see the cosplay people, like, they you go know, out. they'll tag me on Instagram or whatever. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe, like, these people. It's amazing. They've created, like, the helmet and, like, the whole and someone had like it was a mom and daughter, and they made their baby look like Sabine. Oh, I it would love to see that. Cool. It was so cool. <laughs> so yeah. So I mean, like that's um, uh, yeah. It was really it was great to be able to rehearse to or to record together, because then you're actually being able to take off your other actors' performances, which then makes like getting into any sort of emotional moment, which there were a lot in particularly in that first episode with Sabine and with Ursa that um, without having like just doing it in a booth by yourself, it would be hard. Yeah. Cause you, you feed off each other's like energy, if I could say Completely. that. And like, she makes a choice and because she makes a choice, then I'm like uh, the Ursa in me is, is, has a feeling to respond a certain way that maybe Charm, if she was by herself in the booth, trans uh, transmuting Ursa, would not necessarily think about making that choice. Yeah, and but that's also that that you that I can't wait to meet Tia. I'd love Tia. Yeah. she's really talented too. So, because I know that because you should, you have to do cons one day too, Sharma, so I can meet you and stuff yeah. and take selfies. Yeah. Yeah, I have a friend who's done a lot of Star Trek ones because she was a big character on Star Trek. And uh, she's always telling me about the con stuff. So, yeah, it sounds like a blast. And look, it's always amazing to meet people who are like uh, so affected by the work you do, which is like exciting and it's meaningful. And, you know, I'll be like in the back. I'm like, oh, my God, I know her. She's my BFF. Like me and her, we go way back. Hi. <laughs> And it, it, you'll be like, who's that little white boy? Why is he yeah. like, talking to me like that? I'll be like, there's Chris. <laughs> so my next question to you, Sharmila, is what is your fate? What is, what was your favorite quote from Ursa? What was your like favorite thing? Like when you said it, you were like, wow, that's amazing. Give me one more reason to, oh, what was it again? Give me one, give me one reason to ah, 
I can't remember it, of course, now. But that was the one I remember. Um, the Rebels. Was it? There was one that I was like, I to myself, I sounded a little like uh, James Earl Jones as Darth Vader. <laughs> out of myself. The Rebels have... Oh, man, you're catching me on this one. Um, I do remember the moment of seeing the animation that I just like had a literally like my heart started like um, palpitating because I was so thrilled was when or the the uh, dun, 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 the music comes oh, on. The, Star Wars, the Darth Vader theme. And she shoots Gar Saxon. That was like my, that, like that moment. I was like, yes, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> that was your badass moment. Oh, my bad, badass. <laughs> um, so Sharmila, I know you've, I know we're talking about Star Wars, but are you also been in the scandal? Yeah. How was that? How was, was that fantastic. filming? Because that was a big, big show. How, how was that filming that show? It was fantastic. I mean, like, again, I, I was so lucky to be able to work with these incredible actors like Carrie so I was in the White House. I played uh, Tony, the president's secretary, um, who was kind of helping uh, Olivia Pope and the president get together. And my nemesis was Melly, his wife. And um, so I worked with Bellamy, who's a brilliant actress. Um, Carrie Washington, who is a brilliant number one. Like she's an incredible, uh, an incredible person on set. Tony, who is like Hollywood royalty, and I'm a huge old Hollywood fan, so I'm like, oh my god, like Metro Goldwyn Mayer, and you know, you're talking I'm, to me, Tony. You're talking to me. <laughs> I, I, I was schwitzing. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, I was. I remember I was sitting, and I, I, I on set, I usually like to bring a book, like a hard copy book, to read, just because they get me kind of centered, and then I also do like meditation. And I was reading this book, and it was about I, Irene Mayer Selznick, who uh, was Louis B. Mayer's daughter, and she was married to David O. Selznick. And he looks at the book, and he's like, oh, that's my godmother. I'm like, it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, she did Streetcar Named Desire on Broadway and just, like, all sorts of things. So it was like, that was really cool. Um uh, and Jeff Perry, who I'm from Chicago, and I worked at Steppenwolf, and so I was always a really big fan of his. And uh, I'm trying to think, who else was there? Oh, and then uh, Scott uh, Foley, who I was a huge fan of in, in Felicity. I like I'm like, <laughs> that now, but so it was just uh, everyone was really friendly and so uh, willing to work with you, and and um, it was such a wonderful collaborative situation that was good because i that's where i know you're from because i don't watch scandal but i think i watched one episode i forget oh, it, a long time ago. so when you uh because i like to look at who voices people like for star wars of course i go like who voices this and your name came up i was like i know that name from somewhere so i went back and i was like oh she plays a secretary i know <laughs> different right a character with no power and a character with so much power and then even the talking voices like you don't have the same talking as ursa so you have to switch your voice around so yeah. i'm like how that did she do that, that one of the things that was interesting because i think when i walked in with this voice the charm voice dave filoni was like wait because i think that he was expecting maybe i would come in talking like this you know, uh, and I'm kind of known for being able to switch around my voice. I've done it on stage many times. I do it in films. I, you know, I've done it on TV. So uh, that was pretty funny to be like, oh, I, I should walk in everywhere and talk like this. Oh, that, if you talk like that to me, I'll be like, come on, let's keep walking. Let's just keep talking like that. <laughs> so, yeah, so Lemon Lauren was such a different character. But again, like amazing, you know, I was lucky enough that I was on Shonda Rhimes Pro, uh, in her mind for a while. And I had auditioned, I think, for, gosh, eight different roles on that show, including on the pilot I auditioned for Abby before I, uh, you know, got on the show. So just as, you know, they kept bringing me in, thank goodness. And this was ended up being the right role. And then they kept bringing me back for three seasons, which was great. So good for you. You deserve it, Shamala. You hey. deserve it. Thanks.
and I deserve to watch you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Your biggest supporter over here, Charlotte. Biggest. Thank you, thank you. More, more, more. <laughs> so back to Star Wars. So I know you say in the beginning of the interview, you said you're a big Star Wars fan. Well, I know, and I know you said Rogue One. And a lot of people on when I have people on the show or friends I talk to are big Rogue One fans, like from that film. What what do you love so much about that film? What what do you take away from that film? I first thing I like sad stories, and I like uh, stories that don't. Uh, there's not a happy ending to it, except maybe in the future. Obviously, in the future, there's a happy ending, but not for those characters. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, okay. Huge fan from from Bloodline, so I loved seeing him and Felicity Jones. I just thought did such a beautiful job with the with that character, and um. <clears throat> And uh, what's his name? Uh, Cassian? Yes, thank you. Um, I just loved that every character was so complicated and they were tortured and they had the opportunity to continue, like to do the wrong things. And instead they sacrificed themselves to do the right, themselves to do the right thing. And, but it's not an easy sacrifice. It's uh, a comp like they have to go through a process to get there, um, to grow as human beings with this. Um, it's It's always amazing and wonderful to see a female protagonist and it about not a young woman, but like actually an, a, a woman, like, you know, she's not 13 or 14 or 16 years old, she's in her 20s and she's experiencing this. Um, I thought visually it's so beautiful. I still can't get that last shot of Caspian and um, and her at the end with the- um, when, they blow, when it blows up? Yeah, it's like said so, uh, and I cry. I'm like a person, I get very emotional with things. So watching it, I'm always sobbing you know, when her dad is killed and, you know, like all of this stuff is, uh, yeah, I just find, I find that to be, uh, I just loved how dark and how, um, like how you sound like Darth Vader, the dark side is talking in your shine with right now. No, I like, I like that sort of stuff. I think that we're all a mix of light and dark. We are. And, uh, we need to explore both sides of it, you know, for for peace to happen, for balance to happen. So, um, yeah, I, that's why I just love that movie. And then, of course, like the first three Star Wars. I mean, who doesn't love those? I can't, <laughs> you know, A New Hope. What is it? Revenge of Revenge of the Jedi is the third one. And why can't I think of my my favorite yeah. one? It's A New Hope, Empire. Empire. Yep. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I mean, like, my brother, when we were kids, he had, like, a Yoda puppet. I still, like, my mom gave me, I have, like, a little Han Solo, <laughs> uh, a little Darth Vader, like, the action figures. Oh, we from back then. Oh, my God, we had the lunch boxes. Like, we were, like, it was just, and again, like, you know, when I was growing up, there weren't a lot of different types of different colored people in American movies. And... <clears throat> You know, uh, it was just amazing to see like a world where there were so many different types of people. And, you know, that was awesome. Plus Harrison Ford rocks and Carrie Fisher was a badass. And, yeah. you know, that. Now, Sharmila, you said like Rogue One was your favorite movie. So what are your top three favorite Star Wars characters and why? Okay, let's see. Okay, I like I like the big fat uh, dude who uh, Princess Leia was attached to. Oh, uh, Jabba. Jabba, I like Jabba just because every time I see him, he disgusts me and makes me laugh. And I like his little guy on his shoulder. He comes with him, the little like here, here, here. Yeah. That, love him. Um, just because I was like, oh my god, that's so creative. Han Solo, of course, because everyone was in love with him, including me. I was like, I want my boyfriend to be Han Solo. Um, and obviously, Ursa has got to be one of my favorites. I can't not because she's a version of me. 
So, um, but yeah, um, and then of course, um, you know, of course, Felicity Jones' character in um, in uh, Rogue, Rogue One. One. Yeah, yeah, I could see that Ursa. Ursa is one of your favorites. He's got to be, right. That would be really sad if she wasn't. Plus, she's so. I mean, like to be able to play such a complicated character is and. There's so much of her story that I'm like, I wonder what happened to her. I wonder who she was before. Yeah, like Ursa to me, and the whole Mandalorian, because you see, you watch Mandalorian, they go back to Mandalore. You know, where's Ursa in that time? You know, where's Ursa after Clone Wars? You know, we see her in Rebels as a much older lady, but where that we have that time gap where, oh, where is Ursa? Where is Bo Katan? You know, where are these? Ladies, are they scrap? Is there are they in the outer rim or are they on different planets? Like I like we were saying earlier, like a Sabine and Ursa show that follows the Mandalorians in animation. Because I love animation. Animation to me is like the best thing. I think um because I I like live action, don't get me wrong, but animation I think is like it just sticks with me. And that's where I fell in love with like Sabine, you know. T Tia brought her alive, you know, Ashley with Ahsoka brought her alive, Anakin with Matt, you know, Ursa with you, like, I would, like, I would love to see Ursa live action, but I know, like, I hope you would play her, but we, we don't know, you know? They were probably someone famous, let's be honest, you know? Yeah. And I think maybe because as in animation, the character gets to be the character without the, um, you know, like, if... Wait, isn't there Ashoka is being played by Rosario Dawson, right? Yes. And so you think of all of Rosario Dawson as the person, as the actress. Mm -hmm. And so Ashoka isn't purely Ashoka then, right? But when you're watching an animation version of it, the voice can be any voice. You're not thinking, oh, there's Rosario Dawson voicing that character. Unless yeah. someone like such a very specific voice. But other than that, your brain isn't going. Like when you're watching Sabine, you might say, oh, I love what Tia's doing with it. But you're not thinking, oh, there's Tia. Yeah. Right? And then like with Ursa, you're not thinking, oh, this is Charm or Charmala voicing it because you're just in with who this person is. And you connect and, to them. Yeah. And I think that's probably why animation uh, is so much... Uh, it probably freer for the audience to watch in their brains too because there's not an association with all the um all the stuff that we as actors have done in the past correct now Sharmila, your favorite scene that ursa played what's your favorite scene that you got to record and you said it and you're, it's your favorite scene like it will be with you, even if you don't get to voice Ursa again or do anything with Star Wars again. Well, I, got you. I can voice her again. I know, me too. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I like the shooting Gar Saxon. <laughs> that scene, I love it. And when I remember, I was like a giggling school schoolgirl when I recorded that. <laughs> you know. Um, I, my favorite scene is the one where Ursa and Sabine are on, um, they're looking out over um, the land and the two of them are having that really intimate talk together about uh, Sabine's like, you had me kicked out or you had me arrested or something like, you almost had me arrested or killed or whatever. And Ursa explains that, you know, I'm trying to protect you. and. My experience of animation was never that uh, complicated and that dramatic. It was always kind of more comedy. And so I love that scene between the two of them, just like as an acting scene. It's just a really beautiful um, uh, connection and lack of connection between this mother and daughter. Yeah, because you could, it's the balcony scene you're talking about, right? Yes. Yes, and it's so powerful because Sabine is like so distraught that her mother kicked her out or got her arrested, and Ursa's like, "I wanted you to stay away because, it, yeah. it, like, it was this is the way to protect you. Like, I, I, I don't want you to come back here." 
<laughs> and it's such like a switch of um of what she expected, right? Yeah. She expected that her mom was against her and that, you know, and and then to have this no what you see is not necessarily what is the reality of it. We all have our secrets hidden away and reasons of doing things. And so that is uh, as an actor that was my favorite scene. Um and especially when I get to watch it, you know, of course like shooting Gar Saxon like is like mm -hmm. yeah. It. Um any sort of shooting scene is always fun because in real life, as an actor, I don't often get to do them. So this is like, yeah, I'm a badass. I'm gonna like <laughs> take people. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but um, that was like, it's such a moving scene um, to watch the two of them together. So that one would be it. <laughs> now, my final couple questions to you, Sharmila. Um, what was I? I totally forgot. Was I? It was just I just like totally forgot it right now. Um, what was it? Oh my god, I'm going blank. <laughs> Is it, welcome to my world. This happens quite often. I'm going blank. I was going to ask you a good question too. Oh, uh, now I know you can't answer this. I know you don't can't answer it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. You know, I got to just try. Uh, have you heard? anything with Ursa Ren coming in the near future? You know I can't answer that. I, I know, but I, I gotta ask the tough question. I you know. gotta ask the tough questions. But you can't answer that. I can't tell you one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I uh, look forward to everyone like saying, hey, we want to see this. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I said, I want to see a show Sabine and Ursa, or you, like, even in the Bad Bats, like season three, the Mandalorians show up, but how are they showing up? Like, just- I say pitch that. You pitch that. And as soon as this strike is over, hopefully <laughs> all will be doing that. <laughs> so my final question to you, Sharmila, is anybody watching this show right now, anybody that wants to be a voice actor, I want to be a voice actor one day, or an actor, um, any advice to those people that have dreams to do this? Any advice? Oh, you know, my experience is mostly as an actor, like a, a TV, film, commercial, stage, audiobooks. I mean, like I kind of do it all. Um, so I couldn't tell you specifically uh, how to pursue uh, being an animation voice actor. Cause my, you know, this was a job that came through my agent. I didn't know very much about it at all. All I knew was it had something to do with Star Wars. Cause I think it said Lucas films on it. <laughs> um, and I didn't know who I was playing. I read this, the, the, you know, they don't give you the script. So you just have a, a set of sides that are written for you. Um, and I had this idea in my head who I thought this person was and I went for it. And um, I mean, like, look, I think that we cannot escape the fact that uh, being uh, in the creative arts in any way is really challenging in this day and age. You know, um, many of us are middle class, whether it's writers or actors or um, directors. And uh, it is really, really difficult to make a living doing it, you know? Um, so I would tell people that if you love doing it, do it. If there's nothing else that will make you happy, do it. Uh, how awesome we live in the world where you can have a YouTube show or you can create your own content. And so you get to be um, a little more of a master of your own destiny more than someone like me who relies on people hiring me, you know? Um, but yeah, I would say like you have to, uh, if you choose to do this as your profession, you have to kind of think in the big picture and more along the lines that it's a journey. And uh, there are some jobs that you're going to get that are going to be so awesome that you're going to be like, wow, I'm so like, how lucky am I to be able to have done that job? And there's other jobs you're going to get where you're like, okay, well, I have to pay my bills or I need to get my insurance through SAG and I got to do this job. And then there's other ones where you're like, okay, well, I met some really cool people. 
You know, um, I think whatever you do, we're all kind of stumbling through this journey. And um, yeah, and I think that what we can do is just live in the moment of it and be the best people we can and uh, live as full a life as we can, understanding that every experience we have makes us who we are and that's what we bring to our art. Here's your Emmy, Sharma. (laughs) Take it, take it. That's all she wrote. Ursa Wren, everybody. Ursa Wren. <laughs> now, before we go, Sharmila, where can everybody find you on the social media? Um, I'm on Instagram. It's probably the one I'm on most, but I haven't been on it very recently, unfortunately. Um, uh, although, I did post this amazing artist did uh, a drawing, a, a painting of Ursa, and a friend had sent it to me, and so I did post that on May 4th. I know it was beautiful. I saw it. Yeah, it's incredible. incredible. I, oh my god, this is so amazing. Um, so on Instagram, I'm at, at Sharmila Devar. And on Facebook, which I have a public profile on Facebook, so people can follow me there. It's uh I think it's just the same Sharmila Devar. And then uh I'm on Twitter, but I'm again I'm not on too much. Sometimes the audiobook stuff will be on there, and that's at Sharmila Devar. And I think that's what, is there any other ones? No, I think those are. I'm mostly on Instagram is the one that I mostly do. Cool. So just go follow Sharmila at that. Yeah. <laughs> Bar. It's like <laughs> everywhere. It's just the same one. <laughs> well, Sharmila, thank you so much. So, so much for coming on the show. You are so lovely. Oh. I hope you really play Ursa Ren again and just voice her because you killed it. I think when you when you cast someone as the person and their voices, you cannot forget that voice. And I cannot, I would never forget Ursa's voice. You know, that just, that just seals the deal Wait, for everything. Remember, one more reason why I shouldn't lock you up for the rest of your life. That's so fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Like I'm freaking out you just doing the voice. Like I'm like dying. But thank you, Shamla, so much. Come on the show anytime and just talk Star Wars with me. I would love to have you so much for having me. It was fun. Anytime, Sharmila. Uh, guys, thank you to Sharmila for coming on. Thank you for watching the Scavoli Tana Show, guys. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe down below to the YouTube channel, the Scavoli Tana Show, just for more awesomeness and Star Warsness. And be kind to one another, guys. And may the fools be with you, my friends. Always. Bye! Bye! In my life, when you find people who need your help, you help them, no matter what.